Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Over the last several months, we've talked several times about identity. Identity is so important because it what keeps you, you, help, what helps you be the person you want to be. And I had mentioned how as a young fighter pilot, that was a lot of my identity, maybe too much so. And then as a POW, that went away. Uh, not completely, but it didn't mean very much in that situation. What I had to grip, come to grips with is my real core identity of who am I, what do I stand for? What are the commitments that I have that I want to be uh, aligned with? What are the values that I want to keep? And it was a battle. And in that situation, you know, sometimes those uh, fears were really strong and easy to recognize. In day-to-day -day life, our doubts and fears may be more subtle. So I think it's helpful if we go back to what we were talking about earlier on a model that we were working on, and that would be a continuum on one side is secure self, feeling self-confident. On the other side of this continuum is the insecure self, having doubts and fears. Now, if you think about that model, we're all somewhere on that model and we move around. Some days we're more over to the right and more confident. We're more humble, more secure. Other times we're sliding over to the left and being more insecure. Our doubts and fears have popped up. We feel threatened. And under those threats, we may respond quickly either by withdrawing, procrastinating, or we might even attack and deny and defend, overly so. I mean, we see this going on in the media all the time. When somebody gets caught and caught up into something, you know, their doubts and fears come in and you just, their behaviors are, are so obvious sometimes that we see what's going on. Uh, they may not see it, but it's obvious to us. And their behaviors that are not keeping them consistent with who probably they want to be. So it's part of the human condition to have doubts and fears. So we want to recognize that and then one of the best ways to recognize this all is to check in with your emotions because your emotions are a good indicator of what's really going on viscerally in you and how are you going to respond. So we, first of all, we want to recognize what's going on and there's our doubts and fears. We have this check in our stomach. Then we know that there's danger lurking there. We could do something that's going to take us away from our core identity. And then we have to remember, once we recognize what the fear is, the doubt is, the insecurity, we start seeing where we're thinking about going, we have to pause and remember who we are, our core identity. And I want to be consistent with who I am. Well, what will that take? So I have to reflect. So we've recognized the emotions, we've remembered who we are and our commitment, and now we're going to reflect and come up with a plan to respond in a way that's healthy, that is genuine, that's not attacking and not withdrawing, but engaging the problem and working through it. Now, in that process, it's going to take courage. We may have to get counsel, wisdom from other people that we trust. You know, we, you know, we talk about encouragement. That's what encouragement does. It gives us courage. It helps us to believe in ourselves, to believe that we can come through. And when you start believing you could come through and live by your values and your commitments, then you're probably going to do it. And then, of course, respond. Responding in a plan that's thought through with wisdom, uh, that is delivered with respect and confidence and humility, that is very powerful. We like to be around people who res respond that way, who act that way. If you're a leader and you respond that way, you can be vulnerable. You can say, you know, this felt really scary, but here's what I decided to do. You can set the example for others by being courageous, by being vulnerable, by being transparent, but still being consistent with your core identity. That's the goal, to be consistent, to be the person that you want to be, that you pretend to be, and it's all the same. There's no duplicity. There's no, well, here's the way I'm presenting, but I'm really like this over here. No, it's one consistent. You know, that's what integrity is, one solid piece of being who you say you're going to be. It's very powerful. Our culture needs it. Your people need it. Your family needs it. Your friends, your peers. We need those kind of 
behaviors around us. We need those kind of people who will courageously engage and grapple with themselves in order to live up to their commitment, to be their true self, the core person they've committed to be. Well, I hope that you'll take a look at our written blog this month. We'll have a graphic there of the model that we're talking about. Take a look at it. Use it. Discuss it with your team. Discuss it with your family. Discuss it with your kids, your grandkids. And tell your story to them to give them the courage. Encourage them with your stories of your successes, your failures, and keeping your identity. And what did you learn from that? And help them learn from your life and your experiences. That's all a big part of leading with honor. I'll see you next month.